In this video, I am gonna to demonstrate to you my system for removing existing ceramic tile. Now warning, if you're one of these people who love sledgehammers, I'm sorry to disappoint, don't ever use a sledgehammer to remove your tile floor. I've seen it happen before and people actually break their floor joists. So when you're doing a new flooring job and you have existing tile, um, I'm going to say probably 90% of the installation of tile projects in homes that have got a wooden subfloor look a lot like this. And this goes for kitchens, bathrooms, laundry rooms, hallways. Have a look down here, Max. This home has got a ceramic tile, all right? And it's not in greatest shape here, but you can see there's a plywood layer. This is what we call direct bond. So this is uh, cemented directly to this plywood. And if you count the layers, there's four of them. That makes this plywood a half inch. Now, in our area, the building code has us using 5 8 tongue and groove subfloor plus a half an inch plywood. It still falls a little bit shy, okay, of the amount of wood that we need to get an inch and a quarter of substrate. It's still an eighth thin. But what we got here, the reason this is a cheat is because you can see underneath the plywood right here, this is existing vinyl floor, all right? And underneath that vinyl floor, before they put that on, there's a quarter inch plywood. So what happens is you have your house and it has a vinyl floor and you call a tile guy and you order in your installation and they come along and they screw down a half inch plywood over top of your existing floor. And then they tile right over top of that surface. And this is the most common installation in the market today. It's a huge cheat, I hate it. I wish people would take all these extra layers out because as a result of that, they've lost the ability to know if they can't screw down the floor to the floor joists and get rid of the squeaks. They don't know if they've got dips and valleys, they're not using floor leveler, and none of the doors work. So these closet doors that we have over here are the bifolds, they actually don't open all the way. So if you have a house like this, I'm gonna show you all the tips and tricks for getting this out of the way getting all the way back down to the original subfloor. That way you can install your tile and your doors will work again. Now I'm a big fan of cleaning as I go just so that I don't have an accident. Um, these plastic grills, they're garbage. We're not putting these back. Uh, I never put a plastic grill back on because no one can ever step on it. It seems stupid to ever buy them in the first place. But uh, what we're gonna do is we're just taping off the door because when we're doing this tile smashing business, I don't want little chunks of tile flying into the next room. The other room adjoining here has actually got hardwood on it. And the last thing I need is to damage somebody's hardwood floor because it's some rogue piece of tile. All right, so these demo bags here are awesome. They're like plastic burlap sacks. I mean, they package the heck out of it, don't they? Holy cow. Seems like an awful lot of work to stick it in a small box, but... These bags are a little bit thicker than our six mil bags that we use for regular garbage. They're a seven mil, ooh, but they have a... It's the way they're constructed. It's like a nylon mesh, right? It's, it's like anti-tear, anti-anything. So when you're breaking up your tile, because what we do is we just smash the daylights out of the floor with a small hammer. We scoop it all up, put them in these bags. It'd be nice if they were a little bit shorter because a bag that's this strong, I mean, that's gonna be way too heavy when it's full, but I just like to go with something comfortable, 40, 50 pounds, haul it out of here. I'll buy a few extra bags, I don't even care. I'm not throwing my bag out for anybody and uh, I don't wanna get all cut up. And I don't wanna have this stuff, having a bag burst on me halfway through the house. So this is great for transporting garbage. Love these things. This is a great time actually for us to explore their installation technique. See if we can learn anything. Okay, see this? Classic direct bond, right? So 
so we have a lot of cement. They use a, a nice thick trowel. Okay. You can see the trowel grooves right here. Great contact with the tile. But direct bond on plywood. And this is why you shouldn't do this. Most guys don't take the time to wet the plywood while they're installing their tile. And so it doesn't actually bond to the plywood because it's too dry. <sighs> you guys look awesome. <laughs> All right. And there you go. I think... I love it when people don't install tile right because it makes my job so much easier to remove this floor. I'm going to be able to find all my screw holes and everything without any difficulty. And now we don't have to beat the living daylights out of it and create all this dust. So we can put the masks away guys if you like. I just wanted to talk about this real quick. There's so much you can learn from a tile job when you're doing the demolition. So I wanted to point something out. Just going to grab it. Ah. Down here, have a look at this. So we talked about before about how a lot of this tile job, it didn't bond to the plywood, all right? Now, in this one area here, it bonded to the plywood. It is absolutely fascinating. It's the only spot right here. <laughs> and in every other area, the tile comes up and all the cement is full of cement right here, okay? But in this area, the tile came up clean. So kind of an interesting idea. And this is the kind of thing you see when somebody's working along, blah, 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 and they put down their cement and then they stop to have a break. Go answer a phone call, five or 10 minutes goes by, they come back, they lay their tile, they keep on going. What happens is the air dries out the top of the cement. So when you press the tile onto that cement, the part that's in contact with the tile is now dry. And so then you don't even get a bond. But all of that moisture that was in that cement ended up bonding to that plywood where it never did anywhere else. It's absolutely fascinating. I wonder if this is just the only spot that he ever even used a sponge. Maybe he had a spill. I don't know what's going on. It's just bizarre. Although I am very happy that as soon as we get past this point, it starts popping up real clean and easy. There just are not enough screws in this plywood. Okay, these joints line up. They should be staggered. And it gets a lot more strength if you stagger your joints, especially in a hallway. The screws here are like every, almost eight inches, which is not enough because remember there's another linoleum floor underneath this and another quarter inch. So you're not just attaching this plywood, you're, you're sandwiching and bonding all of that together. These should be every two inches and then every six to eight inches. I would probably go six. If you're gonna cheat and go over top of an old floor, you should go six. It's not against the rules to do that. But if you're going to do it, throw in enough screws that you don't get the, the floor moving around and popping. There's a lot of areas in this floor where the grout's chipping out. And it's because of the movement from having the joints like this and not using enough screws. So it's kind of funny. It doesn't matter who you are, where you live. There are minimum standards for everything we do. And this should be a lot more screws, like I mentioned. And it should be a flooring screw. But my bit's not working. Because this, <laughs> no kidding, it looks like a drywall screw, Max. And it is, my God. All right, so here's the deal. That is totally unacceptable. Even if it's a flooring screw, this screw should be longer, first of all, because it's got to pass through an inch and uh, almost an inch and a half material, including the vinyl. And so it's just the, just the tip of that screw grabbing the subfloor. Unbelievable. No wonder there's so much heaving. I'm wondering if maybe the subfloor in this house is a lot more level than I originally thought. It's just such a bad installation of the tile that's causing all this waving. That would be really good for us. Yeah, this is ridiculous. Let's put this, the idea of the fact that the screws are wrong aside for a second. And let's show you how to find them. In this situation, if there's a lousy bond with the plywood, there'll be a lousy bond with the screws. And they'll all be available. Okay? Isn't that something? 
So you can see he's doing about every six inches or so. So we're anticipating another one here. And there it is. And what we're gonna do to save ourselves a lot of time and energy is if you have the ability to back out the screws, then great. If you don't, then you've got to use that great big red bar and some pry bars. You got to find a spot to get underneath the floor, and start ripping it up. So, they cheated and I'm benefiting. Once I get this one up, I'll be able to use that bar and get underneath this plywood. It'll just pop right off because it's not screwed into anything and it's fine thread screw. That's not a flooring screw. That's not even a coarse thread drywall screw. I mean, holy cow, you're gonna cut corners. At least stay on the road. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, I don't see any more screws, so let's just see if we can pop this off here. And there's the original floor. Bum, 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 bum. Nasty. Okay, I think that's gonna be a little bit faster than trying to find all the screws and backing them out. So every job is a little bit different. In this one, our job is quite simple. Usually we have to use the bar like that on a plywood that's been installed. So if you're gonna do a demolition in your house, I suggest you buy the bar. It costs about 30, 35 bucks, but worth its weight in gold because if you do have a cement that's bonded well to this plywood, you're gonna have a hard time finding the screws. And like I said, usually they're every two inches and every six inside, that's a lot of screws. You'll find it's a lot easier sometimes to just rip up the plywood and then go and find the screws that are left behind and pull them out. All right, and that's pretty much the whole process. Once we got this layer off, we're gonna sweep this up a little bit. This layer comes up easy because the vinyl is uh, installed on quarter inch ply and this stuff is going to be installed this stuff is gonna be installed with staples. Yeah, and it just lifts off real easy. This will be a piece of cake. Well, there we go. That's pretty much everything there is to know about removing ceramic tile. Remember, the system is simple. Smash or remove with one of those scrapers. Then you've gotta clean it up a little bit and get rid of your plywood. Outside of that, you know, get some really good bags. Make sure you wear gloves and some safety gear if you wanna have that on. It's not a bad idea to protect your eyes, especially if you're not familiar with this kind of work. Um, listen, if you've enjoyed this content, if it's been helpful to you, then hit the like button. We appreciate that. Subscribe to the channel for all kinds of home renovation DIY tips and tricks. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram at home renovation DIY. This one, we'll see you again next time.